Hello everyone, I've got a new Blender tutorial for you guys. We're going to be recreating cymatics. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially the ripple effect you get when you throw a pebble into a pond. Uh, you know that sort of symmetrical disbursement of waves um, in a ring. It's going to look really cool um, the way we're doing it because we're going to sort of do an abstract spin on it. That will be great for the sort of visuals and like VJ loops. Um, on a side note, if you do make this render, don't forget to tag me on Instagram. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys are doing with the tutorials I'm putting out. And yeah, on with the tutorial. Right, so once you've got Blender open, the first thing we're going to do is delete the default cube. So hit X and then delete. Hit Shift A and we're going to add a mesh and we're going to add a plane. And we're going to scale that up to 8. So hit S and then 8. Now come into edit mode. So you hit tab and come to edge, subdivide and come to this menu here on the bottom left and we're going to make the number of cuts 100 now hit A just to make sure that you have everything selected and come over to edge and we're going to hit edge split now come out of edit mode so hit tab and if you come to your modifier section we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add a smooth modifier so the edge split that we applied earlier is basically it's essentially disconnected the mesh by the edges and then when you play with the factor on the um, smooth parameter, it allows you to change the size of the edge split in a way. Uh, you can do some cool things with the animation. We're going to set it at about 0.93. Now we're going to add another modifier. So click on the drop down menu and we're going to add a solidify modifier. And we're going to pump this up to about 10 meters. Now add another modifier and we're going to add a wave modifier so click on that this is where we're going to get our kind of cymatic effects when you have the wave modifier added if you just hit play it essentially creates an animation for you um, so you don't have to do any keyframing with this you just hit spacebar and it does it for you but what we're going to do first we're just going to bring the timeline up so come down here bring this timeline up and we're going to make this a five second animation so change the end to 120 uh, this is assuming that you're at 24 frames per second. Next thing, we're going to click on this camera, hit Alt-G and Alt-R, so we reset the location and the rotation. Now, if you hit G and then Z, we can bring the camera up to wherever we want, and if you hit 0, that toggles in and out of camera mode. So hit 0, hit G, then Z, and just bring it up to somewhere that looks good. We'll say about here so we have the whole plane in. Now that looks cool, but I want to make it a bit more ripply. So we're going to play around with the, with the wave modifier parameters. Full disclosure, I'm not an expert in this modifier. I've only just started playing around with it. So um, I'm not going to go into detail over what each parameter does. Uh, I'm just going to set to what I think looks cool. So we're going to make sure all these checkboxes are selected. And we are going to change the offset to 13.2 and you can see that gives us a few frames of delay before the animation starts. Uh, we're going to change the life to 9.8. I think that is basically how long the wave animation plays for. So the longer you pump up the life, the longer the animation will play. But yeah, we'll leave it at 9.8 for now. The damp, we'll set that to 96.8. And what I think that does is it sort of smooths out the end of the animation. So if you have if you have lower dampening, it's going to end quickly. And I believe that if you have a higher damp dampening, it's probably going to it's going to sort of ease out. If you know like how synthesis works, it's kind of like the release parameter on a synthesizer. And on position, we're going to leave everything where it is. On the speed, we're going to change that to 0 0.01 it's going to be very slow and the speed I, I speed i don't really need to explain that it's just how i believe it's how fast the the wave animation um performs so obviously if you pump the speed up it's gonna simulate quicker and if and vice versa and on the height i think that's the height of the wave so we're going to pump that to 0.84 so if you look here Lower height, that's going to bring it down. 
if you go into the negatives, you're going to get a sort of inverse effect. And on the positives, you're going to get a kind of a bump. But yeah, we're going to pop that to 0 0.84. The width we're going to put at 0 0.07. And narrow, we're going to make that 10 meters. And now that's going to give you that sort of cymatic effect, you know, the kind of ripple effect that you see if you like drop a stone in a pond. It's quite a cool effect. Right, so we're going to start shading this now. Uh, I'm just going to save it. So I just got. So if you just save before you go into render mode, just because I'm running on the laptop and I don't want it to crash while I'm doing this. Great, we're going to go into rendered mode now. So hit Z and then eight. And first thing we're going to do is click on this light here. And I'm just going to turn my overlays on. So this light here, we're going to hit Alt G, put it in the middle. I'm going to make the world black. So come to your world settings here, color, change that to black. And I'm going to turn these overlays off again now and just zoom in a bit. And I'm going to hit G, Z, and just bring the light up a bit, say about here. And I'm going to click on the plane. And I'm going to change the materials on this. I'm going to add a new material. I'm going to pump the metallic up. And I'm going to bring the base color to a more grayish, sort of dark gray. Cool. Now I'm going to duplicate this light. So if you hit Shift D, that's going to duplicate that light. And hit Escape, just so you don't accidentally move it anywhere. Because we want this in the center still. And we're going to make the color of this second light pink. Sort of a nice strong pink. Now, if you come to your transform settings of your pink light, we're going to bring the location down. So hit, bring the Z down until you can kind of see it. Just until you can kind of see this sort of cross coming on from your light. We're just going to leave it there. So about minus 10, I think, on the Z axis. I'm going to come to the light settings. I think on the, on the first light we had, I'm going to make that a bit more of a blue color just to kind of contrast against the pink. I hit play and that's going to look quite cool. Now you can see it's a bit, you're getting this darkness here. I think it's because the, um, I think maybe we need to bring the light down a bit. So bring it about here, I think. I'm just going to take my overlays off again. Yeah, just play around with the with the location settings of your first light. You can bring it up if you want, or you can bring it in closer. It's just different ways of lighting it. It's not really. It's, you just do it to your taste. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the camera in a bit. So I'm going to bring the camera down. So click on your camera, bring it down on the z-axis. We'll say about here. Bring your overlays on again. And bring the camera down, just make sure you're not obviously coming too far in, so you're blocking view. We'll say about 4.5 on the z-axis for your camera. So now, and what we're going to do now on the camera is come to your camera settings. We're going to bring the focal length down to about, we'll say about 21. It's going to give you a wide angle lens, which I think is going to look a bit cooler, a bit more abstract than just having it zoomed out. Yeah, just play around with the with the position of the camera really to somewhere you like. I keep changing my mind, but just sort of experimenting as I go. I'm gonna bring it out a bit again. Now that's cool. Now there's one last thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go back into my 3D viewport. I'm just gonna come out of render mode, so Z and then six, just so my computer doesn't struggle while I'm doing this. I'm gonna animate the smooth parameter on the plane. If you remember, we we're playing around with that earlier. So just come to your modifier section of your plane. Make sure you're on the first frame. And we're going to apply a keyframe on the factor of your smooth parameter. So with your mouse hovered over the factor parameter, hit I on your keyboard. And it's going to add a keyframe here. Now click on that keyframe, hit Shift D. And we're going to bring that to 1, 2, 1. Shift D again. And we're going to bring it to frame 31. And then Shift D again. And we're going to bring this to frame 91. And on frame 61, we're going to bring the smooth factor up to 
and then hit I to apply a keyframe and this is what you're going to get. It sort of creates this disintegration effect on each, uh, each kind of cube which looks really cool I think. Now if you jump into rendered mode and see how that looks. I'm just going to play around with the color management now. So if you come to your render engine, we're doing this in Eevee by the way. Uh, just going to click ambient inclusion, bloom. We'll just bring it down a bit because the bloom is always strong in Eevee. We'll add some screen space reflections and we'll come down to color management. We're going to give it very high contrast. We're going to bring the gamma to 0.8. Right. The only thing left to do now is to render the animation. So if you Come over here to your output properties. We're going to change the output to just save it somewhere you can find it. I've got a little tutorial folder set up for my tutorial renders. Change your file format to FFmpeg video. Encoding, change that to MPEG4. I'm just going to come out of rendered mode. Sorry. Video codec, leave it as H264. Output quality will do perceptually lossless then all you got to do is come to render and hit render animation. Okay, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do feel like you gained value from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. I'll be putting down a link below for the project file if you want to just have a play around with it or if you just want to download the render, you can get that from my website. That's nebmotion.co.uk.